Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss current affairs of 22nd March 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us have a brief introduction regarding the topics. Now we are going to have our discussion. So first topic it is regarding India-Australia relationship. So this article is important from your international relations which mainly comes in the GS paper too. And this topic will be important from your means. And next topic it is regarding with her unemployment benefits. So this article which is mainly focusing on unemployment in India. So what are the schemes which are mainly related to this unemployment and how the performance of the scheme is there. So this topic it is important from your economy which mainly comes under GS paper 2. And next topic it is regarding Indo-Pacific should be free of conflicts which mainly said by Morrison. Again, this topic, it is important from your international relations, which mainly comes in the GS paper too. And next topic, it is regarding economic crisis. So, Sri Lanka's aggravating economic crisis. So, this is important from your international relations, which mainly comes in the GS paper too. And next topic, it is regarding Supreme Court for regarding extending of deadline for COVID-19 relief. So, as you all know that, so, uh, people who are mainly died with this COVID-19 pandemic. So they are going to get some relief from the government. So for that they need to go for applications, right? So that is the timeline which is mainly talked in this article. So this is important from quality which mainly comes under GS paper too. And next topic it is regarding India US officials discuss 2 plus 2 preparations. So this article which is mainly talking about 2 plus 2 dialogue between India and US. So again this topic is important from here. International relations, which mainly comes in a GS paper too. So let us see today's quote. Today's quote it is regarding poverty. So poverty it is one of the favorite topic of UPSC. You can expect questions in your mains and even in your essay as well. Okay, from mains you can get questions in your GS one and as well as GS two. So quote here is poverty is like punishment for a crime you didn't commit. So poverty is nothing but a crime and nothing but a punishment because if you are in poverty means you are not going to get enough food okay you are not going to get proper nutrition requirements you are not going to get proper clothing and even the society also we can see there is deprivation because of poverty so here poverty is like a punishment for a crime you didn't commit okay you can use this quote whenever you are writing answer regarding this poverty and even in your essay as well so first topic it is regarding realizing the potential of Maitri and as well as mateship. Okay, this Maitri means nothing but friendship. Okay, so this article is mainly talking about India, Australia, strategy and economic and community ties. So this article is very much important from international relations. Already we studied that I think last three days ago. So between India and Australia fourth or 14th annual summit which mainly done right so because of this this article is in news so here we are going to talk about the deep history between india and australia and in which areas we had cooperation right so if you're talking about introduction so australia is celebrating 75 years of independence of india and in this context it is mainly want to make large investments in india okay so this is the context so if you're talking about history between india and australia so we are natural partners because each ancient and modern countries and cultures and we are full of energy and even we are full with optimism as well. So Australia recognizes the depth and as well as diversity of significant or magnificent culture. So both if you see India and Australia they are mainly sharing the culture and even we are having full of energy and we are having optimism. So here Australia which mainly recognizes depth of diversity of India's magnificent culture. So like India in the same lines Australia also shares a story and this story which mainly stretches back tens of thousands of years and, in, and if you are talking about indigenous people of Australia they are custodians of oldest continuing civilization in the world. So this is the thing which mainly said by Australia. Okay, and if you're talking about friendship between India and uh, Australia, so here Australia says that this friendship it is like a similar ring. India says it is maitri, that is friendship, and Australians say it is mateship. Okay, 
So both stand for respect, understanding and equality. So recently on March 21st, two prime ministers held this virtual summit and they took some important steps regarding remarkable pace for implementing India-Australia Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. Okay, so recently this virtual summit which mainly held and they mainly talked about India-Australia Comprehensive Strategic Partnership and this partnership will be helpful for closer cooperation and even it will be helpful for regular review of relations as well right so actually if you're talking about a relationship between australia and india which mainly elevated in 2020 and we have advanced practical actions we are having good cyber relations critical technologies that we are sharing and we are having some cause of concerns in maritime efforts and defense ties and economic and as well as business links quadrilateral cooperation so in all these areas we are having a good cooperation between india and australia and this recent virtual summit which mainly marked another milestone okay because this summit which mainly announced a range of tangible and as well as practical initiatives especially in economic strategic and as well as regional interest in these all these areas so we are going to have a good tangible practical initiatives between india and australia and these initiatives they are investments into and okay into the promise and potential of our nations so what are the initiatives which we are coming up in the future so this will be very much helpful for growing up of further relationship between india and australia and these investments which will be helpful for addressing the challenges and as well as it will be helpful for providing some new opportunities of the of our time and it be and we are mainly going for harnessing of technology we are going for harnessing of talent and as well as trading spirit of our people and we are focusing to deliver resilience prosperity and as well as security in the nation as well so if you're talking about in areas of technology and research we are working on a new and renewable energy partnership and we are focusing to support the development of technologies such as green hydrogen, ultra low cost solar, okay. And we are mainly supporting research and investment, especially in the critical minerals of Australia. And that will be helpful for manufacturing in India. And we are also focusing to boost collaboration on innovation, science and entrepreneurship. So that will mainly help to scale up ideas, okay. That will address global challenges as well. So we are also focusing on increasing of investment into our countries especially in the space sectors as well and even we are going to establish australia india center of excellence and it is focusing on critical and emerging technology policy as well right and we also made some insignificant or we can say like we have mainly made some milestones especially in the some deals like investments opportunities uh, supply chains and even to unlock our complementary economies and we are focusing on how to increase the flow of goods and services and as well as people between these two countries and if you're talking about even in this education sector also we are focusing much we are focusing on students so we are mainly investing in indian talented uh, young people okay especially through our new future skills initiative that is between education and training providers and industry so between this education and training providers and industry, there is a proper collaboration and they are mainly invested in this talented Indian young people. And the, and this complements the Australian uh, government significant new Maitri scholarship and uh, fellowships as well. And Australia is also providing Indian students and researchers a chance to experience Australia's world class education system as well. So in this way here, Australia which is mainly focusing on Indian diaspora and students contribution right and we can say like Australia and India they are also working together for ensuring of peaceful and stable region and they are focusing on free and open Indo-Pacific region right and if you are talking about different relationship between India and Australia so we are mainly focusing on enhancing information sharing and operational cooperation between India and Australia and they are also focusing on humanitarian support to the region as well and these investments in our strategic economic and community ties they show what we can achieve when two multi-dimensional democracies they join in a spirit of trust and as well as understanding okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is talking about unemployment 
for this topic which is mainly focusing on unemployment so this article that we can study under gs paper 2 and as well as gs paper 3 right and now let us try to see what is the context so even before covid 19 which entered into our life so before this covid 19 that is pre covid 19 levels also so in our economy we saw unemployment which is present i'm not saying that after this covid 19 only there is increasing of unemployment but even before this covid 19 period also if you see in 2017 18 data which mainly says about 6.1 percentage of unemployment is there and if you are focusing on especially urban unemployment it is it is like 7.8 percentage and rural unemployment rate is 5.3 percentage so while unemployment rate which mainly declined to 5.8 percentage in year 2018 to 2019 and in 2019 to 2020 it was like 4.8 percentage but what happened due to this COVID-19 once again there is rise of unemployment that is seen and it is one of the important challenge now. So if you see some data which is given in this article it mainly says that if we consider current weekly status quarterly employment statistic in urban areas it is like 9.4 percentage of unemployment in the month of January March okay and it mainly going to rose to 12.6 percentage in april june 2021 but if you're talking about data which is cmi that is center for monitoring indian economy it mainly says that average unemployment urban unemployment rate which remained higher that is 9.04 percentage in year 2021 and in january february it is like seven percentage in 2020 to january february okay so here we can say that after this entry of this COVID-19 into our lives, so that mainly led to increasing of unemployment. So because of an increasing of unemployment, there is no proper livelihood opportunities and there is no proper income for the people and there is no proper savings for the people. So because of this, there is decrease in the demand for the goods and services. And now again, due to this Russia-Ukraine crisis now, that led to increasing of crude oil prices and commodity prices. That is leading to still it will become very very difficult for our economic revival process if we're talking about unlike china in india also we have labor laws but those labor laws are not expressively providing unemployment benefits for the people okay so we are having employee state insurance act that is esia act of 1948 we are having rajiv gandhi shramik kalyan yojana so they are mainly focusing to provide unemployment allowances to involuntarily unemployed people. But if you are talking about cash relief, it is very very less. That is 50 percentage of last average daily wages for the first 12 months. And it will be like 20, 25 percentage for next 12 months. So the employment allowances which is given is very very low. So if you are talking about some examples like schemes to present in India. In 2018, government of India which mainly introduced um, Atal Bhimit Vekti Kalyan Yojana. So under this scheme, about unemployed in, in, uh, people, they will get some insurance. Okay, they will be allowed some allowances at a rate of fifty percentage of average per day earning. Okay, and they came up with a pilot project, and this project was extended during this COVID nineteen period. And if you are talking about one more important act, that is Industrial Disputes Act of nineteen forty seven. So it is mainly focusing, okay, especially on some establishments, so which are mainly employing 100 or more workers and they must uh, pay this retrenchment compensation of 15 days of average pay for completed years of service to workers in case of any lost job due to government sanctioned worker retrenchment or closure of establishment. So according to this Industrial Dispute Act mainly says that if there is any company which mainly established and this company which is mainly employing about 100 or more than 100 workers. So if this company which is mainly going to close uh, or because of this some um, government sanctions. So whenever from this company the workers who are losing this job means so this company need to pay compensation of 15 days of average pay. Okay. So this is about this Industrial Dispute Act. So apart from that we also studied about the Social Security Code 2020. It also included this unemployment protection okay in the definition of the social security but these schemes are not much providing benefits to this unemployed people. So if you are talking about unsuccessful schemes 
so we have some reports it mainly says that according to annual reports of employee state incidence corporation and standard note of esis okay it mainly analyzes the working of unemployment allowance schemes so it mainly says that only just 0.043 percentage of employees they avail from this unemployment allowances and unemployment allowances share it is a very very less that is about 0.25 percentage to 0.99 percentage and even though in this covid 19 period there was one scheme in rural areas which mainly uh, focused to provide some employment opportunities for this rural people that is mg narega so mg narega stands for mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act so actually this mg narega which played an important role in providing relief to the millions of workers actually but one cause of concern is this year budget the budgetary allocations for this scheme it is very very low and even we have staff selection commission so this ssa which mainly offers uh, offers employment opportunities right but this ssa which is also having a vague promise of schemes to unorganized workers as well so this is also one cause of concern so in this context the ssa must be amended to provide for a universal unemployment allowance scheme and it can make some contributions okay so even the second national commission on labor 2022 which mainly recommended an unemployment scheme for organized workers okay and they are mainly financed by employers workers and as well as government so this is a gist of this topic and now let us try to see one data point so title says that arms dependency on russia so this uh, data point which mainly shows about details regarding so amount of arms that you are getting from this uh, russia so it is according to sipri report okay so india's arms import have reduced significantly in last 5 years so if you are seeing from 2017 to 2021 so there is decreasing of arms import okay so this is the first such drop after the country recorded consistent increase in the 5 year periods okay beginning of 1991 so since 1991 onwards so this 5 year time that is 2017 to 2021 there is a very much decreasing of imports of arms from russia that is mainly seen and russia has been the one of the most preferred source of indian deterrence purchases okay since last 2000 onwards okay and actually now france replaces this russia okay france replaces russia as india's primary source of arms arms okay and this is the one important thing and russia has fulfilled over 46 percentage of india's defense needs in the last 5 years so india china egypt iraq belarus kazakhstan syria algeria vietnam they were the some of the major importers of arms from the russia in 2017 21 period so this is according to details from the sipri report so if you see there is a drop of imports okay that you can see so if you are comparing with this if this period there is decreasing of imports that we can see through this graph and other countries like syria belarus algeria uh and china vietnam iraq egypt india so these are at least 14 countries they are having 50 percentage of their arms they are getting from russia so this is also very very important and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding indo pacific should be free of conflicts says morrison so this article it is important from international relations which mainly comes under your gs paper 2 so now let us try to see context so developments such as those in ukraine should never happen in indo pacific region so this is the thing which mainly said by prime minister of australia so as you know you know that there is a shifting of power that is from to from west towards east that is mainly seen from atlantic towards indo pacific region there is shifting of power and most of the countries they kept eye on this indo pacific region so in this context here we know about quad grouping we know about akus so all these groups they are mainly focusing for securing of this indo pacific region so in this context here prime minister of australia who mainly said that so we should not get the developments that we are seeing in this russia ukraine crisis that should not be happen in this indo pacific region so if you see some more details it mainly says that addressing this bilateral annual annual leaders meeting here in this context here prime minister of australia he said that there is a need of greater cooperation among like minded democracies and he also urged prime minister to provide leadership within the quad and in his address 
Mr. Modi focused on Indo-Pacific region and he also called for appropriate global standards for emerging technologies as well. So now let us try to talk about next topic, Sri Lanka's aggravating economic crisis. So here we need to know about what is the crisis that is happening in Sri Lanka. Because Sri Lanka it is very very near, okay, our neighboring country and even India has foreign policy that is neighborhood first policy. So regarding that, yes, India have the responsibility to do some help for this uh, Sri Lanka. And we are going to see this topic in a very great detail. So this will be important from your international relations. So if you see context, it mainly says that Sri Lanka's economic crisis is aggravating rapidly. So there is increasing of the Sri Lanka's crisis that is mainly seen. So because of this economic crisis that is facing by this Sri Lanka, so it is mainly putting citizens through enormous hardship. Okay, so recently what happened, two senior citizens, they died while they were waiting for the long queues to buy the fuel. So the price of this cooking fuel also had been increased. So if you see the price in Sri Lankan rupees, it is like 4,200 rupees. But in the price of uh, Indian rupee, it is like 1,150 rupees per cooking gas. And not only that, even milk powder cost had been increased to 600 Sri Lankan rupees. And even we studied that due to the lack of paper, so there is cancellation of examination for the millions of the students, right, because of shortage of paper. So these are the some important uh, things that mainly says that says Sri Lanka it is in severe economic crisis. So if we are talking about details, it mainly says that Sri Lanka is in the grips of one of its worst, one of its worst economic meltdowns in the history. Okay, and the first wave of this COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, which mainly offered early and as well as short signs of distress. And in this distress, there are thousands of Sri Lankan laborers. In West Asian countries, they were less left standard and even they returned jobless. So what happened at present in this Sri Lanka? So in this West Asian countries, so Sri Lankan laborers, they are left standard in other countries. And what happened after this people, they standard in other countries, they started returning to the Sri Lanka. And even many garment factories, tea estates in Sri Lanka, they could not function. And the infection rate is very, very high in Sri Lanka. And thousands of youth, they lost their jobs in their cities, right? So, and there is lack of comprehensive strategy to respond to the crisis that is mainly seen in Sri Lanka. And actually what happened, government which is mainly abrupt switched to organic farming and that led to ill-advised further aggravated the problem in Sri Lanka. So the government which mainly declared emergency regulation for distribution of essential food items and even though they are going for wide import, okay, import restrictions because they have to save the dollars, right? So actually you know that the dollar value, uh, if you are comparing with this Sri Lankan rupee, so what happened, there is a very, very downfall of uh, Sri Lankan rupee which is mainly seen. So one dollar is equal to Sri Lankan rupees like 265, right? And even consumer price inflation is very, very high, it is like 16.8 percentage and the food reserves are at a dollar 2.31 billion at the end of February and Sri Lanka must have to repay even the foreign debt right the total here is about dollar 7 billion this year and even what happened on one side it is also increasing its import okay so on this in this way we can say there will be rising of debt of Sri Lanka so if you're talking about how India is helping so beginning in January 2022, India extended assistance totally of dollar 2.4 billion. So it mainly includes like 400 million RBI currency swap and about 500 million as a loan. And it also gave for credit lines for importing of food, fuel and as well as medicines from India. So as you all know, India which is mainly having this uh, neighborhood first policy. So India stands with Sri Lanka, okay. And recently we saw that dollar one billion credit line, which mainly signed for supplying of essential commodities as well, okay. So if you see the image, so this is our Sri Lanka, this is our India, and here we have Gulf of Oman, here we have Park Street. And now let us try to see next topic is regarding Supreme Court for extending deadline for COVID relief. So this article it is important from polity. So if you see background, so people who died due to this COVID-19, they get gain some exgratia from the government. So for this, they have to go for applications, right? So this article it is mainly talking about deadline for that applications. So if you see context mainly says that Supreme Court did not agree with union government suggestion 
to set a deadline for filing of the claims for this COVID-19 death compensation for four weeks. Okay, so government said that we can go for compensation uh, that can be filed within four weeks, but Supreme Court didn't accept it. So four weeks, it is very, very short. So because family would need some time to recover from the death, okay, and they have to come out of that death and they have to file for a claim and they need to get necessary documents. And this Supreme Court went, uh, said that instead of giving uh, them, uh, giving them, uh, giving them four weeks of time, it suggested it will be like 60 days of time for the families who already lost a life. Okay, but it said that in the future, the time should be increased to 90 days, that is three months of time. So this is about this topic. And now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding India, USA officials. They are going to discuss this two plus two preparations. So this article which is mainly focusing on two plus two dialogue between India and US. So this article it is important from your international issues which mainly comes under GS paper too. So if you see context it mainly says that US okay US secretary and foreign secretary they met on Monday and they are mainly focusing on preparation for this two plus two ministerial meeting that is going to be held in Washington in next month. Okay so here we need to know about what is this two plus two dialogue. So 2 plus 2 ministerial it is the highest level institutional mechanism which is mainly seen between the two countries and it is a format of dialogue where defense or foreign ministers or secretaries they meet with their counterparts from another country and India which mainly holds such talks with U, uh, USA in uh, Japan and even Australia. So this is just of this topic and now let us try to see the questions of yesterday. So first question is regarding quit India movement and you have to see which are the correct statements regarding this quit India movement. So first one is emergence of parallel government in some parts of country. Yes. And it's when it also star, saw the participation of youth, uh, women and peasants. Yes. And it was an Indian violent movement. It is not a violent movement. Okay. You can eliminate this third statement. And it's when his movement was a spontaneous outburst. It Okay. It is also correct. And there were communal clashes. They are not there are no communal clashes. So that answer will be 1, 2 and 4. And next question is regarding INA, Indian National Army. So idea of INA was first conceived in Malaya by Mohan Singh. Yes, Indian prisoners of war, they handed over the Japanese, were recruited into this Nash, Indian National Army. Yes, Subhash Chandra was recognized INA in Singapore in 1943. Yes, so which of the following are correct? So all correct option is 4. And today's questions of the first one it is regarding temple entry movement. So try to read these statements and give me the correct option. And next one it is regarding dual system of administration in Bengal. So these are the two questions for the practice. Try to read the statements and give me the correct option in the comment box. There is no negative marking here. So before saying today's newspaper, let us try to see a small announcement. I want to make a small announcement on this platform. So here in Rathor Science, we are coming up with this mains answer writing practice course and this is for one long year. So here we are going to focus on entire GS1, GS2, GS3 and as well as GS4 and we will be giving you weekly targets. So based on that weekly target daily one question will be given to you. So you have to write that answer and you have to send back to our email ID so that there will be evaluation and we provide you model answer as well and we also provide you one to one mentorship. So this course is absolutely beneficial and this course is going to be started in April first week. So if you are interested, so please try to join this course. It will be absolutely beneficial. So apart from that, we are also launching this pen drive courses for entire foundational course of 2023. And this course is very, very beneficial because we are dealing with each and every topic in a very great detail. And I can ensure you there will be the conceptual clarity after watching all these lectures and you can completely rely on these videos. Okay. So in this way, this will be helpful to clear your presence and as well as means. And if you want to take single module like economy, history, geography, so we can also provide that as well. Okay. So these are the details of this courses. And if you want to talk to me directly, you can call to this number. 8074765513 and if you want to watch the demo videos you can visit our website Rathos IS Academy and there you have to register with your email ID and there you can watch the three demo videos without paying a single penny that is free of cost so after watching this videos only if you want to go for payment you can go for payment right and if you want to get the PDF of this class you can join the telegram channel 
link is given in description box. And now let us try to see this today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So this is our today's Hindu newspaper. Date here is March 22, 2022 and this is Delhi edition. So first topic it is regarding Indo-Pacific should be free of conflicts. I discussed this topic. And one more important topic here is a plane with 132 on board crashes in China. So actually in China what happened is Boeing 737, uh, 737 plane which mainly crashed and that led to death of 132 people. Right, it mainly went and it mainly heated some high altitude regions like hills or mountains in China. And next article it is like Supreme Court for extending deadline for this COVID-19 relief. I discussed this topic. And if you move forward in this uh, city page, you can leave this. And you can also leave this page. And here you can see dengue cases in double digits for third month. So what happened in our capital city, that is in the national capital region, there is increasing of these dengue cases. So you have to know some facts regarding this dengue fever. Already we discussed that in number of times. And if you move further, you can see this editorial page. You can read this article. It is regarding Russia-Ukraine crisis. So I didn't discuss this because number of times we had discussion on this topic. And I discussed about this India-Australia relations. And here I have to give you one homework. So here you need to focus on this article. It is mainly focusing on condition and as well as mentality of shortage of education. So what will be the impact that is seen on the students? So that is mainly given here. So you can go through that. And I discussed this topic regarding unemployment. I discussed this data point as well. And this text and concept contest I discussed about this aggravating crisis of the Sri Lanka. And you can leave this Imran Khan's article. It's not much relevant. And next topic is about 10% reservations. Actually, what happened recently, this economically weaker sections bill, which mainly promising 10% of reservation for individuals who mainly comes under this economically backward categories. That is mainly passed. And recently what happened, so this, this uh, bill which mainly filed a petition, right? So because of this, what happened, there is this, uh, there is some discussions of mainly going on this EWS certificate. The actual implementation of this EWS quota could be challenging as procuring cash certificates could be very much difficult. So this is one of the cause of concern regarding this 10 percentage of reservation. And if you move further, you can see here, I see to hear petitions on criteria for this EWS quota next month. So after once this discussion is held in Supreme Court, we will be getting number of articles there. We can study about that in detail. And regarding this 2 plus 2 dialogue, I discussed article. And next one is less than 1 percentage of oil imports from Russia. So actually what happened, our Union Petroleum and Natural Gas Minister, he mainly told Rajya Sabha that, uh, that how much amount of this oil that we are importing, that is just 1 percentage of oil. So this is the thing which mainly you have to remember. And if you move further, you can see new parliament building is 44 percentage complete. So here you need to know about this central vista project that will be very important. And here this article which we are talking about ensure child's victim privacy. So what happened one child who is mainly affected by sexual assault and that child identity was disclosed in the media. And whenever this disclosure of information is happening, that will be having some, uh, some privacy issues and that will mainly expose the children victim to retaliation by the perpetrators of the crime of their accomplice as well. And next one here is, if you are talking about right to privacy, it is, a, it is a fundamental right. So this thing which mainly said by a Supreme Court in this case for the judgment as well. So you have to think about this topic, whether it is correct or not. And next article it is regarding attacks in Burkina Faso kill 18 troops. So 18 soldiers they have been killed in this Burkina Faso because of increasing of violence here. Okay, so you have to open this map and you have to locate where this Burkina Faso which is mainly located. Okay, and next topic is regarding oil rises past. Okay, oil rises past dollar 114 dollars per barrel as UUU mulls Russian ban. So what happened oil prices which mainly jumped more than six dollars on monday okay and now this brent crude it is about dollar 114 okay 114 a barrel okay so this is the thing which mainly said uh, by this article so these are the some important articles that appear in this today's newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathor's is academy and if you like this lecture truly you can hit the like button and if you don't like so please uh, hit this uh, dislike button 
and before disliking my video so let me know your suggestions and what you're expecting from us so by this i'm concluding thank you so much